it is a blustery day here in the <clears throat> collapse of global industrial civilization uh, unfolding on this collapsing planet today here. What is it? Tuesday, March 31st, 2020. And I have, I'm thrilled to say I have an interview coming up with uh, Bill Ryerson, the uh, head of Population Media Center in the Population Institute that I need to get ready for. <clears throat> but I have enough. I have enough time to bring you today's chronicle of the collapse. I didn't know whether to, to uh, throw this one in to the coronavirus chronicles or the collapse chronicles, but uh, I'm going to uh, call it, we're going to make this today's chronicle of the collapse. Uh, this was the number one headline on the mainstream media yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> on Yahoo News, and I need to put uh, my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, yes, my, I'm sorry, my name is Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, who is going to get in his little bed for a while. Okay, uh, I just thought this was an interesting story, and probably we're going to see a lot more similar stories to this weird story coming up. So, uh, if you missed it, <clears throat> Sus suspected SARS virus and flu samples found in luggage as the FBI r report describes China's biosecurity risk. And this isn't just China, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's anywhere. Uh, China could have the same story about us. All right. <clears throat> In late November of 2018, just over a year before the first coronavirus case was identified in Wuhan, China, U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency agents at Detroit Metro Airport stopped a Chinese biologist with three vials labeled antibodies in his luggage. <clears throat> the biologist told the agents that a colleague in China had asked him to deliver the vials to a researcher at a U.S. institute. After examining the vials, however, custom agents came to an alarming conclusion. Uh, this is a, according to an unclassified FBI tactical intelligence report obtained by Yahoo News, quoting the FBI here, inspection of the writing on the vials and the stated recipient led inspection personnel to believe the materials contained within the vials may be viable Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS, materials. The report, written by the Chemical and Biological Intelligence Unit of the FBI's Weapons of Mass Destruction Directorate, does not give the name of the Chinese scientist carrying the suspected SARS and MERS samples or the intended recipient in the U.S. But the FBI concluded that this incident and two other similar cases cited in the report were part of an alarming pattern. <clears throat> uh, getting back to the, quoting the report, quote, the Weapons of Mass Destruction Directorate assesses foreign scientific researchers who transport undeclared and undocumented biological materials into the U.S. in their personal carry-on or checked luggage almost certainly present a U.S. biosecurity risk. Uh, the WMDD makes this assessment with high confidence based on liaison reporting with direct access. 
uh, close quote. The report, which came out more than two months before the World Health Organization learned of a cluster of pneumonia cases in Wuhan that turned out to be the COVID uh, virus appears to be part of a larger FBI concern about China's involvement with scientific research in the U.S. While the report refers broadly to foreign researchers, all three cases cited involve Chinese nationals. In the case of the suspected SARS and MERS viral vials, the intelligence report cites another classified document that it marked FISA, meaning it contains information collected under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Yet another case cited in the report appeared to involve flu strains and a third was suspected E. coli. <clears throat> The FBI does not state precisely what sort of biosecurity risk these cases could present, but Raina McIntyre, a professor of global biosecurity at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, said the FBI appears to be concerned with dual-use research that would be used for bioterrorism and if the illicit samples cited in the report were being brought into the U.S., she says, the traffic is likely to be both ways. Uh, you, you know, this is spy versus spy out of Mad Magazine, guys. Uh, anything that China or anyone else is doing to us, we're doing it to them. This stuff is going on and ramping up all over this planet. Make no mistake about this. Right along with cyber warfare, we have all of these bioterror shenanigans uh, going on. Uh, quoting the professor, how do you know what they're bringing in and out unless you have a comprehensive surveillance point. If it's going one way, it's going the other way. You would be very naive to assume otherwise. <clears throat> Retired Air Force Brigadier General Robert, Robert Spalding, who worked on China issues on the National Security Council, said, quote, there is a threat close quote, posed by Chinese nationals carrying biological samples, but he believes it's, quote, likely the carrier would be someone who is unwitting, close quote, making it hard to determine the intent. Quote, some likely could be deliberate to test our ability to identify and intercept Others could be opportunistic, he said. Uh, the FBI report refers to both biosecurity, which typically refers to the intentional misuse of pathogens, such as bioterrorism and biosafety, which covers accidental release. The FBI declined to comment on the report, uh, I bet they did, uh, concerns about Chinese biosafety are not new. For example, the SARS outbreak back in 2003 was followed by several incidents of infections caused by laboratory accidents, including eight cases that resulted from mishandling at the Chinese Institute of Virology in Beijing. And of course, uh, although I don't report on conspiracy theories here uh, at Collapse Chronicles, 
uh, there's a whole lot of different versions of the conspiracy theory that uh, this latest virus uh, was either purposefully reduced if you're a way out the conspiracy wacko or the more common it was created in a uh, bioweapons lab in China and accidentally escaped. Okay, this is Elsa Kania, uh, senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security. Quote, there have been cases in the past where a variant of some kind of flu pandemic had escaped from a laboratory because of mismanagement, uh, close quote. But the problem is certainly not limited to Chinese researchers, even if those cases, even if those cases have been prominent, she continued, quote, certainly it is a biosecurity risk when anyone is transporting materials in a manner that is clandestine because there have been several incidents in which this has occurred with researchers of a variety of nationalities. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, this goes on and on and on. Uh, I will put the link on here because it talks, it goes into becoming a coronavirus uh, chronicle after this. So, uh, but I am only halfway through this excellent article, uh, but you can pick it up for from here. Uh, to find out more about uh, whether it's this virus <clears throat> or the next one, uh, and you better believe the next one is coming, uh, and the next one is going to be a hell of a lot bigger than this one, so you can certainly look at, at how both the government and the general public are reacting to this level of uh, pandemic panic and do your own math about what it's going to look like on this planet uh, when Mad Max really gets on in earnest, which is certainly uh, in the forecast uh, in the near future. Uh, so anyway, get out there and enjoy it while you still can before Mad Max erupts totally from sea to shining sea. But anyway, if you enjoyed this uh, little tidbit from the mainstream media, uh, please thumb this video up and maybe even think about subscribing when you're over here. But I've got to wrap this up and get ready to uh, for my next interview, uh, which will be, I think I'll be posting this interview with Bill Ryerson this coming up Sunday. So keep your eye out for that. Bye, guys.